Hey everyone! Recently, I created MakeForest, a procedural forest, river, and pathway generator built with geometry nodes. As part of the environment, I also made some rocks to scatter along the riverbank and forest floor. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how I created these rocks. Make sure to check out MakeForest. The product link and demo video link are in the description. Let's get started. Step 1. Adding the base mesh. First, add a cube by pressing Shift plus A mesh cube. Move it up along the z-axis slightly. Step 2. Subdividing the mesh. Before modifying, subdivide the cube a few times to add more detail. Make sure you're in edit mode, then apply a cell fracture effect. Set the particle count to around 150 or adjust based on your needs. Set the noise value to 1, and I'll leave the other settings at their default. Now that the cell fracture is complete, we have our low poly rocks, which we can enhance with more detail and realism. We'll achieve this using a combination of geometry nodes and various modifiers. To remesh it, first add a mesh to volume node, increase the volume density, and then follow it with a volume to mesh node. You can adjust the adaptivity as needed to control the mesh detail. Now that we've remeshed it, you might notice the rock looks jagged and uneven. To clean it up, add a smooth modifier. Make sure the smooth modifier is below the geometry nodes modifier. Increase the repeat value in the smooth modifier to around 100 for a smoother result. Now, to distort the rock, add a set position node. Then, add a noise texture and connect it to the offset input of the set position node. Now, as soon as you connect the noise texture's color output, the rock shifts from its original position. To bring it back, add a vector math subtract node between the noise texture and set position node. Set the subtract values to 0.5 for the X, Y, and Z axes. Now, let's shade it smooth. Since we have successfully distorted one rock, we can apply the same modifiers to the other rocks as well. Select all the rocks that do not have the Geometry Nodes modifier applied. Then, select the rock that already has Geometry Nodes applied at last. This makes it the active selection. Now, press Ctrl-L and choose Copy Modifiers to apply the setup to all selected rocks. After applying the modifiers, select all the rocks, right-click, and choose Convert to Mesh. Let's add a rock material to give the rocks a more realistic appearance. I'm using Polyhaven's Asset Browser to choose a rock material. If you don't have their asset browser, you can visit the Polyhaven website to download rock materials manually. If you notice that the texture doesn't apply correctly, it's because of the UV mapping. You could go into edit mode and unwrap the rocks manually, but to skip this process, I'm going to use object coordinates in the material editor and change the projection from flat to box. This will automatically generate UV mapping for us. Let's turn the displacement value to zero in the material settings, because we are going to add displacement using the displace modifier instead. There isn't a big difference between doing it here and using the modifier, but applying it through the displace modifier allows us to see the displacement effect directly in the viewport. We are also going to use edge detection, and having real geometry will help capture more detailed shading and depth. Let's add displace modifier. Click on the new texture option, Set the coordinates to UV, since we used object coordinates in the shader. I'm setting it to object, set the direction to normal. Now let's go to the texture properties panel and let's add the displacement texture. Or you can even add any other displacement texture. Adjust the strength of the displacement as needed to get the desired level of detail. Once you're happy with the result, apply the modifier to all the other rocks by linking the modifier the same way we did earlier. Select all the rocks, select the one with the Displace modifier last, press Cockrell plus L, and choose Copy Modifiers. Now, copy the image texture of the same rock texture that we added earlier, and mix both using a Mix RGB node. Add a Geometry node, and connect the pointiness output to the factor of Mix RGB node. I learnt this technique from CG Geek's tutorial. Set the Blending mode to Multiply, add a color ramp between the Geometry node and the factor of Mix RGB, you can adjust the pointiness in the color ramp. Connect the object coordinates output to the copied image texture. 
Then add a brightness and contrast node. You can adjust the color ramp or add an extra ramp to fine tune the values. You can also swap the image texture order in the Mix RGB node to achieve different looks. Now, if you adjust the brightness and contrast, you'll notice a change in how the edges of the rock appear. In the real world, rocks often appear brighter along the edges due to factors like edge wear, erosion, and light scattering. This method helps simulate that effect, making the rocks look more natural and realistic.